Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and this is I Am Loved Church. Welcome. Let's, let's get in this. Thank you, Father, for today, this beautiful day. We know that there's a lot going on in our lives, personally, uh, relationally, with the people of our household, um, our community, our churches. We know that there's a bunch of voices in the world, the voices within ourself that tell us the negative things that we hear on a regular basis the voices of other people, and the voices of the enemy. Father, we would pray that we would hear your voice within us. That we'd hear your voice within our community and our relationships and our families. We would hear our voice in the entire world, your voice in the entire world. We can't thank you enough, Father, that wherever sin abounds grace abounds more in jesus mighty name like i said there's a lot of things going on in our world on a regular basis i know that you guys just like myself are hearing about this virus I'm not even going to mention its name because it doesn't deserve the attention that it's getting personally in the household, in our community, in our nation, in our world. You know what deserves our attention? The name of Jesus, who is always with us, around us. And the entire universe declares that he is in control over every situation. So I want to declare that over any situation, not just this one, but your past, your present, and your eternal future. Jesus is in control over every situation, and we have to learn not that we can overcome the situation in ourself. Not that anyone can help us overcome the situation within our family or friends or even our community or even our government or our nation. There's only one who can help us overcome not just this situation, this virus, disease, or problem in our personal lives, our community lives, or our worldly way of living. He can help us overcome every situation from here on out to eternity. Before you were even created, before you and I, the world around us, before anything even happened, God was there at the beginning. And he foresaw all of the bad that we experience or know of in history and are to come. And the victory was already there before anything was even manifested in the physical. Jesus is Lord over every situation. And he is the solution to every situation. This virus plus people equals death. No, this virus plus Jesus equals life. Jesus is the victory of anything that I face, that you face, that people face, that our nation faces, that our churches faces, that our community faces, that our family faces. Jesus is the victory and he needs to be acknowledged in order to get the victory in our lives he needs to be acknowledged above everything 
above all of the idols that we have in our personal life, our relational life, and our eternal life. Eternity is living inside of you and I. But we have a choice whether what we're going to feed our eternal being, are we going to feed it the negativity or are we going to feed it the blood and the love and the life of Jesus? Are we going to pay attention to the negativity or are we going to pay attention to the Lord? And right now, this sermon is about paying attention to the Lord. That's why I'm not going to talk about this. Just like I'm not going to talk about all the negative stuff. Yes, we know that. We already knew that. The moment we were born, we know that there's negativity. And it comes in different forms and shapes and sizes, but it's the same demon, the same Satan, the same evil behind the veil. But I'm not behind the veil. I'm with inside with the Lord. And the Lord is asking all of us, do you want to see? Do you want to hear? Do you want to know the truth? This sermon's about recognizing the Father in the midst of the storm. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Peter. For those of you who aren't biblical, or don't know or read your Bible, let me explain it. There was a part in the Bible where one of Jesus' followers, his disciple, they're in the middle of this lake, this huge lake, and there's a storm everywhere. There's a storm, just waters, just exploding, lightning, just fear everywhere. And here comes Jesus walking on water. And his disciples, one of them being Peter, recognizes Jesus on the water. And they say, it's the Lord, meaning God. And in this moment, Peter asks, can I come out with you on the water? And Jesus says, come. In this raging storm, Think about the worst storm that you can possibly imagine. Here's this guy just calmly walking through it, not letting it affect him. And here comes Peter because he has his eyes on Jesus. He has his eyes on God. He stops paying attention to what's around him. He stops paying attention to the raging sea and probably the whales and the sharks and then the negativity, really, the fear. And he just sees Jesus, his Savior, and he just starts stepping out of the boat and walking towards him on water, just like Jesus. And it doesn't explain how far he gets, but what it does say is, He takes his eyes off of Jesus and then he starts to pay attention to the storm and then he starts to become afraid and then he starts to sink into the water and the water is representing the voices of the world and the Bible talks about the voices of the world being the voice of Satan, demons the flesh, our sinful nature. It can come from us, it can come from other people, or it can come from the demons representing Satan's kingdom. And all he wants to do is destroy your life. He hates God, and he hates what God looks like. And we are made in God's image. So he hates us. So he doesn't care. He just wants to see God's creation crumble and fall. And he wants to see his children be fearful. Because if you're afraid, then you're negative. Whatever rules your belief system, 
Whatever you pay attention to the most is what you believe. And what you believe rules your life. But Jesus says, you have to abandon your way of belief and you have to inherit my ways of belief, my way of thinking, in order to see me through the storm of your life. And until you focus your eyes on Jesus or learn to hear the voice of God and tune him in and tune everything else out, your life will be a disaster and you will sink into the water, which represents your grave, your death. You will be consumed by the waves of negativity of yourself, other people, or Satan. This is why it's so important to read the Holy Bible so we can focus in on the Father's voice, learn what his voice sounds like. You see, my voice, your voice, and everyone's voice has a different pitch and frequency. And it's unique to its own character and being. And God who created our conscience and our souls and our minds and all things that are good, living, he created us in his image. And the knowledge of good and evil is to either pay attention to the knowledge of evil or the knowledge of good, which is the father, God, the creator, the only unique one. We can't shepherd ourselves. We need a savior to shepherd us. Are you and I willing to invite that savior into our lives to save us from the disasters of the enemy that are constantly raging like the sea? And all he wants to do is take away our joy and our happiness and see us miserable and ultimately kill us. And I don't know about you, but if your life feels or is consumed by fear, sorrow, grief, and anger, and there is no hope, it's because you don't have Jesus in your life. You haven't tuned in his voice. You haven't seen his face. You haven't read your Bible. You haven't prayed to him because there's only one Savior. And the moment you learn how to tune him in, seek his face, then all of the fear that the enemy tries to throw at you will be torted away, will be reversed like a boomerang. So I hear this virus going on and I hear the fear and anxiety. And let me just tell you something real quick. People die on a regular basis that the media never decides to cover. But as a filmmaker, if you want to amplify a detail in something, you spend a long duration of time on that subject. From the beginning of the film, it'll be very short points. But if you want to highlight a certain point, you spend a longer time emphasizing on it. Or you get a close-up. You see, this is a... Um, I guess you would call this a medium shot. A close-up would be like my face. You can see the details in, my, in the expression. And then a, a further ch shot would be a, f a far shot. And I would spend more time on a particular subject to really get you to hone in on it, pay attention to it. And that's like the enemy. He works in the same way, but God... He works not only in the same way, but he works better than I can ever explain. One of the analogies I was talking about to my wife was, I want you to imagine Jesus knocks on your door like a mailman or woman, and he leaves a package there. Actually, he is the package. And your house is a representation of you. And it's filled with roaches, rats, mice, 
bugs, spiders, wasps, just filthy with insects and dirty animals that are only causing your mind, your heart, your spirit, and your life to be dysfunctional and grotesque. And Jesus is the exterminator of all these things. And he wants to come into your heart. He wants to come into your mind. He wants to come into your spirit. He wants to come into your life. And, and he's saying, unless you invite me in, the things that you have in your lifestyle, in your mind, in your heart, in your spirit, those are the things that are not only hurting you, but they're destroying your entire life. And if they're destroying just your whole life, then anyone you come in contact to or with in your life, you are going to destroy. And it's happening between each and every one of us, which is causing this epidemic throughout our entire world, nation. The Bible says that when one sinner repents, the angels in heaven rejoice when you repent, when you acknowledge the true God and Jesus as your savior, when you follow in his ways. And here's another example of lukewarm believers. Jesus is this package knocking on your door and he wants to come inside your house, which is your heart, your life, your spirit, your mind. And he wants to completely renew your house. You ever seen those shows where they renew the entire house? That's what Jesus wants to do for you. He's like, he wants to replace the entire carpeting. He wants to replace all the furniture, all the counters and the tilings and the painting on the wall, including what you wear. All your clothes, your entire bathroom. He wants to replace everything. He wants to give you a whole new life wrapped into one package. But the problem is, some of us don't even open up the door to him. We just keep him out there and we, we pretend that our house is, is clean, is nicely furnished when it's not in comparison to God, the creator. Your house is neatly furnished for your own sin. And when you invite Jesus into your heart, into your mind, in your life, in your spirit, and, and to allow to him to fully consume you, he changes out everything. And it's uncomfortable at first. And you realize how dirty and nasty you are living spiritually, physically, relationally. And he changes out the carpet. He changes out the furniture. He changes out the um, dishes, everything. But all of that gets thrown outside and, and burned. You have to leave your old behaviors. You may even have to leave friends who aren't godly, who aren't encouraging, who are actually there destroying your life by you taking their advice on how to live, by being their friend. Relationships have to be torn off for something new to happen. If you want to build a new house, you have to destroy the old one. If you want to be a new person, you have to destroy your old self. And you have to adopt a new way of thinking, of living, of being. And I know some of you guys are thinking that right now. And here's even the lukewarm Christians. They allowed Jesus to change certain parts in their life, but they didn't invite him into all of their life, all of the rooms in this house that's described as their, their body, their soul, their spirit. You invited him into your mind as an idea, but you didn't invite him into your heart to transform you. You invited him into your living room, but not into your bedroom. Or maybe into your bedroom, but not into your kitchen. But maybe in your kitchen, but not into that secret room 
that you know about that no one knows about. He wants to completely give you a new house, a new life, so, so to say. But will you allow him into every part of your life? You're not just a Christian on Sundays. You're not just a Christian on Facebook posting up all these nice verses for everyone to see. You should be fully transparent in your faith, in your life, personally, relationally, secretively. You should have no secrets. Because where there's secrets, there's sin. The question is, do you trust him to open up the door? Do you trust him to change out all of your furniture, your carpet, the walls in your house, everything? Do you trust him to let him inside every part of your life, all of the rooms? Let him in not only in informatively, but allow him in so he can transform you, your heart, your spirit, your eyes, your ears, everything. Lord, when we come into baptism, we come in, in into it, which is dying of the old man and being clothed with the Lord Jesus. The choice is up to you. Do you like being afraid? Do you like feeling pain and guilty and sorrow and grief? Do you like that way that you're living now? Do you believe everything that someone says? Do you have dignity for yourself? Do you love people? Do you feel loved? Jesus says, today is the day of salvation. Every day is a day of salvation, a new beginning. The old has passed and the new will come. Your sins are destroying your life. And they will continue to destroy your life until the day that you die. They're running you down to the grave. They're in a hurry to get you to the grave. But Jesus wants you to rise from the dead. He doesn't want you to stay in the grave. He wants you to resurrect with him in inter into eternal glory. I'm going to cut this sermon short and just finish up on the last few things. I'm going to emphasize on some points so you can get it. By faith, when you open up the Holy Bible, you open the doors of heaven to invite Christ into your mind as an idea. The more you open up the Bible every day, you open it up by faith to invite him into your heart. Today, tomorrow, a week, two, a month, a year, every day you open up that Bible, you open up heaven. And there should become a point where you start to open up your heart. Will you open up the Bible so that you may finally open up your heart? God has got a lot of blessings for you. God loves you. God wants you. Many people don't want you, but God, He wants you so bad. And not like some bad relationship want you for the wrong reasons. God wants you 
to know that you're loved by him. He wants you to walk in this world with victory and to think that, you know, nothing that people do or say to me will bother me anymore. He doesn't want you to live in fear. He wants you to live in victory so you can triumph and glorify Jesus loves me. This I know, for I open up the Bible by faith, and it tells me so. All this fear and anxiety is based off one thing. People don't know they're loved. And if they don't know it, they don't believe it. And if they don't believe it, they don't feel it. And if they don't feel it, everything becomes meaningless. So I take this time to invite you from your meaningless life of Satan, of sin, of selfishness. I, I, I take this time to invite you into meaning, into glory, into love, into peace forever and ever. By faith, we walk and we trust that no matter what's happening, I can hear the Father telling me, telling you, I love you. Do you trust me? God bless.